I picked up a little non-working radio, a little General Electric for Craigslist. And uh, the old lady wanted to assure me that it did not work and I would not get my money back if I discovered it didn't work. And that's cool. So, great little box, um, well constructed, pretty solid. Two little tiny speakers. They look to be in good shape. This is a hot chassis, what they call a hot chassis um, system here. Um, this is a 50, 50 HK6 tube. But, uh, so there's no transformer on this. So I'm going to redesign the amplifier in here. I'm not going to repair the radio. Whatever tube amp I put in here, I'll probably put in a little, maybe a, a 5 water. Uh, so that uh, it will make an excellent little guitar practice amp with an extension speaker so that uh, you can really crank it if you want to through an extension speaker. The chassis came out easy enough of the box. And the first question, of course, is um, would I be able to build on this chassis? And the answer is no. Um, because there will be nowhere to mount a, um, well, I'll have to clean it all off completely, get rid of all of this. This is the output transformer for the speakers, so that's fine. I'd like to keep that, but so then the, and also I would keep the, the volume here and there's a switch here. So there's a couple of things here I'd like to keep. Maybe I can attach this uh, front bracket to a, a new chassis of my own choosing. My experience is that by the time I get this cleaned up in here, um, look at that printed circuit board. By the time I get that all cleaned out of there, uh, there's not going to be a very nice looking hunk of metal left, so it's probably better to start with a clean chassis. So this is what I'm left with. Uh, this is the, what's left of the chassis. Uh, actually it was just a thick circuit board in here, just sitting in those grooves all the way around and everything was mounted to the circuit board, so they don't need a lot of space underneath, of course. Uh, nice design, but um, not good for our purposes. I like this little chassis because it's got the rubber feet that screw into the, into the base here, and uh, so I'd like to keep this, if I can, somehow put a plate on here and build on top of it. Uh, I'll replace these pots and switches, um, but they're in a good location because when they're attached, to the chassis here, and this fits in here, then of course the, the controls will fit right back through those holes. That's got to go, but I might somehow try and mount that wheel so that uh, when we turn when we turn a control here, that maybe the dials will work. That would be a nice little added feature, but otherwise um, I will be guided by firstly whether I can reuse this. I mean, that's probably about uh, eight or nine inches long. It's, it doesn't give me a lot of real estate to build a build an amplifier on, uh, especially a, a tube amp with a trans transformer. But that will guide my decision making from here on. It's sort of a, a work in progress. You can't sort of make a plan and execute it. You have to try, you know, a dozen different things before you you get the right combination of ideas to work. These speakers here would be fine for a little practice amp or a little quiet music, but uh, I want to have uh, a speaker out so that if anybody wants to crank this up, even a 5 watt tube amp can really kick out some volume and it would probably blow these little speakers to hell and back if, um, if they got thrashed for very long. They're old Alnicos and uh, I wouldn't expect them to have a very high output. Um, Primarily because they're old and the magnets on the Alnicos can, can fade after a bunch of decades. So these will be okay just for what they are. They fit in here. If they really sound like crap, I will replace them with some higher quality speakers. But I always like to see how they, how they sound first. You never know with the old Alnicos. Sometimes they sound really good and punchy still. Sometimes they're just a bit flat. And they, if, if the magnets have, have sort of faded on them, you know because you get break up too early you get too much sort of fizz out of the speaker and uh, so at that point maybe I have to invest in other speakers for inside here but at this point I'm happy just to see what 
what they sound like first. But the other main consideration is I want to be able to have an extension speaker so that somebody can use this as a little amp head if they want to and uh, rock out. The other consideration, of course, is that this little output transformer here is designed to match up with these little speakers and a pretty low output in terms of uh, wattage RMS. So each of these speakers, I just tested them here on my own meter, and each of them reads about 3.4, 3.5 ohms. So these speakers are probably, you know, 4 ohm speakers. And uh, that means that if I run them one way, I'm going to have a 2 ohm draw coming out of the amp. If I run them the other way, I'll have an 8 ohm. I found in my junk, one of my junk bins, a chassis, a small chassis here that actually fit inside that frame. Now it's not a perfect fit and I'm going to have to do a little shenanigans to, to uh, make sure this gives me good uh, shielding. Uh, plus I have a uh, an old transformer, power transformer, it was out of a Columbia radio um, and I noted on here that it w w might be good for a Skylark. Anyway, um, I had to do a bit of manufacturing here, which can become very tedious and take hours and hours. It took me most of the day yesterday to get this sorted out. Uh, and when you look inside here, you can see I had to cut out the hole for the transformer to fit down in it. I had to figure out how I was going to put the fuse in here and where I bring the power in. The power is going to come in here. Um, and this is just going to be three tubes. I decided to just go with three tubes. I'm going to use a six a six volt uh, rectifier tube. I'll have a 12 AX7 in here, which I might have to move further away from things if I get too much hum off it. But right now I just kept the old uh, nine pin socket, and I will put in a ta-da. I haven't used this before on any other project because it's been sitting around for a while because it hummed rather badly. And when I took a close look at it, I noticed that uh, the plates had all had all drifted apart and there was a lot of movement in them. There, were, there was quite a bit. At first it wasn't noticeable, but what you do is you get some lacquer. I just used some, uh, I think it was nitrocellulose lacquer. <clears throat> and uh, brush it in well and then clamp that and then that was clamped overnight so by the time i came out this morning it's one solid piece of metal with uh, nothing to vibrate in between and that gets rid of the hum so we've got a great um, a great transformer here uh, two 6.3 taps probably it, in the radio it came out of it had one for the the uh, lights and one for the filaments and i'm getting 280 volts aside from it so that'll give me probably about 325 uh, B plus coming out of the rectifier depending on which rectifier tube I use it'll probably be an easy 81 I guess I just wanted to emphasize the point that when you start on one of these kind of projects and you start modifying like this logistics become kind of a nightmare and you have to be prepared to deal with them for example the amount of work that went into here, just to fabricating this little plate, so, because it had a large hole drilled for a, a, a octal, and I wanted to put a, a six volt rectifier in here, so I had to make a smaller hole. I had to make some standoffs down in here. You can see that silver standoff, and there's another one over this side. And I'll find a way of, of shielding properly all the way around here. But you have to do all of this work just to see if it's going to work in the first place. The amount of, of constant design and redesign, uh, logistically, there is one hurdle after the other. And so sometimes you can work on a project like this for, for a week or two, or design a design a chassis like this and then try and fit it and find that it actually doesn't work in in the amp and you have to go back and redesign a new chassis and start from scratch that has happened to me so it's not for the faint of heart uh, you've got to be persistent 
and you've got to, I guess, it's a very creative process, so you've got to love what you're doing. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this particular build simply because I got rid of the hum and a tr transformer, so the transformer's free. Um, this little chassis from some other other piece fit inside this framework. So there's a lot of good things coming together in this particular one. Um, so I'm feeling optimistic. A good example of logistics that become more and more complicated as the build progresses is this. So I made this little panel because I was thinking I'd have an EZ81 rectifier tube here. But then I realized that the EZ81, you know, it has a one amp draw, which is not huge, uh, but it also kicks out a lot of power. So I decided to go to a CA4. It's a smaller tube. It's smaller than a mini size tube. So I drilled this hole too big. So I had to make another plate, drill a smaller hole to accommodate the smaller socket for the super mini, whatever you call these things. Uh, but possibly the most um, annoying and time consuming uh, pain in the neck with a build like this in terms of logistics is here we have a pot that was out of this, out of this um, system. And you know, funky little knobs down here, great. That works fine. I like the knobs, but they are designed to fit on a really narrow shaft. And I don't want to put old ancient pots back in there because they're bound to give me trouble. So I have to ask the question, what kind of a pot am I going to put in here? And I'm going to put in a new pot. This one's, uh, I think, an alpha. And they have a larger, a larger, as you can see, they've got a larger shaft. And that shaft will not fit inside that. It just won't go, right? So I'm going to use some, some knobs that will fit off a different system. But then the other thing to consider is, which is a shame, because I, I like to use original stuff whenever I can. So it's like, okay, these are never going to fit on anything. Um, but then there's, there's a, a, a question of the distance of the length of the shaft. So these were these are all designed purpose built to fit exactly in this to match up exactly with that cabinet. And they have spent an enormous amount of time, the, the people who designed this stuff, to, to get everything just right, nothing too big, nothing too small. So then I come to this situation. Well, this has a lot a long shaft on it because you can get these on-off switch one meg pots and they have a long shaft. So this one I can cut down to size. But typically, they don't have that. Typically, they just have a, like a little short shaft. And that's not long enough. So, there's various ways to extend that shaft. One is to use a coupler. You can get these on Amazon. Sometimes they fit, sometimes they don't. The ones I've got that fit over this, are these work great, but they're going to be too long. So, by the time I get this in here and add a... A shaft coupling to it it's going to be sticking way out so that means I've got a purpose design and create my own shaft coupling kind of system so in this situation this is a, a, a big pen that has been cut up it has been slipped over the shaft and then I've got another piece of rod with a similar diameter slipped inside of it and I've epoxied them together with a B weld it's a two-part gray epoxy that I've, I've found to be pretty good for this. I've done it a bunch of times. Sometimes they come loose, um, but for the most part, I've drilled holes through here so that it really gets right through, um, and it mushes out of the holes. And this take, this, I just did this one. It's going to take about four or five hours to go, to go off, so I can't use it for now. But that's just a really good example of the things you don't expect that you're going to have to do when you start redesigning and rebuilding an amp. And again, just an example of the logistics of what happens in something as simple as just trying to get a, a darn knob on the, on the um, shaft of the, the on-off switch or the, the tone pot, as the case may be. And these kind of issues just come up again and again and again. Still, have patience, keep at it. It's a highly creative process, and sometimes the results can be really rewarding. 
I tested the output transformer that came with this little amplifier and it had a winding ratio of 40 to 1. And that makes it unsuitable for, uh, with these speakers, with this matchup, that would be suitable if I wanted a 2 ohm draw on the speakers. 40 to 1 would work, but I wanted something that was going to have more flexibility. So I've got the classic tone here. And this has a couple of taps, a 4 ohm and an 8 ohm. So I can wire this uh, because I have a single, I'm going to have a single 6V6 power tube. I'm looking for about a 5,000 ohm on the tube side and 4 or a, an 8 on the speaker side. And I will make that so that whoever plugs into the back of this has a choice of 4 or 8 ohm. Well, I forgot to film part of the process, uh, so I've got a kind of a complete product here. I've refinished the wood. We've got our, our on-off volume here, tone here, input jack for the guitar here, and windows where you can see through to the tubes. I ended up taking the panel out of here. I decided instead to mount the output transformer right here on the chassis. It was just easier to run the, the wire, the cabling straight into the chassis from here. I've got a couple of lines coming out of the chassis one to light some LEDs and the other for the speakers which I wired to give me 8 ohms. What we've got on the back here are two options for anybody who wants to add an extension speaker. I refinished this particle board. It's the original particle board. And so here's the options. You can plug in an 8 ohm or a 4 ohm. Got to make sure you switch it to the correct one. And a little warning there to the end user that, you know, leave this switch to 8 ohm unless you're plugging in an extension speaker. So let's see how this uh, amp sounds. plugging in a Weber 12 inch Alnico speaker. I've got one in a different box that I can plug into the back of this and uh, of course you get more headroom with a, a, a higher rated speaker, a newer speaker. But I'm very happy with this. Great little project. Hope you enjoyed watching. Bye for now.